talking more about money this week, managing costs and revenues. <coughs> so what's financial management? We know what financial management is in the business sector, in the business world. But what is in healthcare? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just kind of catered to healthcare needs and healthcare issues. So it's basically providing oversight of the operations that go on in healthcare organizations. Um, it's also looking at long-term financial plans and financial goals of the healthcare organization. And obviously, trying to make money or trying to save money for the healthcare organization. So what are some basic goals? Well, you want to generate a reasonable net income. Everybody know what net income is? Revenues, how much you make, minus expenses. How much you spend. So um, the bigger your net income is, the better. Set prices for services. We have to facilitate relationships and manage contracts with uh, third-party payers. Not, not just third-party payers, vendors also. Um, we do a lot of analysis, costs, we're doing audits, and we're investing in long-term capital assets. People, does anybody know what a long-term capital asset might be? Could be facility, like a building. Equipment, MRI, CT scan, large <coughs> expensive equipment. Those are long-term capital assets. We have to make sure that payroll is covered. Got to make sure everybody gets paid, right? Mm -hmm. Protect the organization's tax status, respond to the government, and control financial risks. What might some financial risks be? Budget cuts. Think of any other one? Competition might be a financial risk. If you have a competitor that's growing their market share and taking away your business, that could be a financial risk. So tax status of healthcare organizations is not the same for each organization. There's some that are for profit, some that are not for profit. For-profit ones are typically investor-owned. So that means that an investor owns them. They typically make the decisions of the organization. So these type of organizations pay taxes. They serve private interests, which are typically the interests of the investors. <coughs> the goal is obviously to maximize profits. They're trying to make as much money as they can. But they must also serve the community. Now we have not-for-profits that serve public interests. Those are more community focused and they're tax exempt. Their main goal is to provide community benefit, charity care, indigent. And there's two types. There's private and government owned. So I've actually worked for a private, not-for-profit hospital. Um, However, it's important, sometimes people forget that just because an organization is not for profit, they still need to make money. Mm -hmm. They still have to make a profit, they still have to pay for bills and operations and payrolls. So their goal is still to make a profit too. While it may not be as much of a priority as a for-profit hospital, they still have to make money to survive. Let me just talk about that. So financial governance. Typically how it goes is at the top, you will have a board of directors, regardless of if you are for profit or not for profit. They each have a board. Um, the board typically makes a lot of the decisions of the organization. You have your CEO, your CFO, which is the chief financial officer, and then uh, the controller, the treasurer, internal auditor all may report to the chief financial officer. So a chief financial officer is almost equivalent to a CEO, but just financial. They handle all the financial matters, but they are at the top of the uh, work structure under the financial area. So if something financially goes wrong, this is probably the person that's gonna get most of the blame. I have a question. What is the difference between the um the, direct, the board of directors versus the advisory board. Is there a difference? An advisory board is more, as it says, it's um, 
a board that you would go to for um, to kind of bounce off ideas. It's more mm -hmm. kind of like a focus group a little bit, mm -hmm. whereas a board of directors is more formal. Mm -hmm. Some of it's going to depend on the organization type. They may have a different name for it, but the board of directors is basically the group that you go before when you're trying to present a plan or something. So if you want to expand your hospital, it's not something you just do. Mm -hmm. You have to present that plan to the board and they say yes or no. Okay. So the board of directors is going to actually get rid of the president, yep. or, but the advisory board can't. Is there a difference? Or, can they, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't. It's kind of two separate okay. things. Okay. Okay. Um, board of directors has a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Advisory board is more kind of kind of just bouncing ideas off of them, okay. like a focus group, like what should I do? Okay. But they don't really have any power to say yes or no. A board of director can say your CEO is not performing. We propose that they be terminated. Okay. So they have a lot of power. Um, now there may be some organizations, if it's a small organization, they may not have a board of directors. Maybe all they have is advisory boards. But um, um, my understanding, they still don't have the same executive powers as a okay. board of directors is going to have. Uh, managing reimbursements from third party payers. So there's a few different methods used. We have the retrospective, which is retrospective, right? So you have charges, charges minus a discount, cost plus. Then you have prospective. These are the ones kind of you pay before you have a surgery. So it might be copay, per diem, capitation, something like that. So this is when you get the bill after you've had the surgery. This is what you pay before you see the doctor or before the services perform. Retrospective, prospective. Now what does Medicare and Medicaid do? Their methods are contractual allowances, DRGs, case mix. To physicians, it's RB, RBSs, and capitated care plans. So in a hospital, these DRGs are based on what type of diagnosis the patient has. So if two patients go in for different things, they're not going to have the same DRGs. Um, now physicians, the RB, RBSs are based on what service the physician is providing. So if it's just a regular checkup versus a biopsy, the RBRBS is going to be different for each one. So reimbursement by the uninsured. Obviously, these are people without insurance. It's resulted in a rise of bankruptcies, right? Mm -hmm. People are going bankruptcy a lot from failure to pay medical bills. Uncompensated care. There's two types. There's bad debt and there's charity care. Bad debt is what's written off by the organization. Usually they turn it over to collection. And then charity care is kind of what we talked about with the hospital kind of eats. Mm -hmm. So how do we control costs? Because we have to control costs as managers, especially now. But there's a lot of estimating that has to go on it requires a lot of analysis. We're trending, we're looking at what happened last year, um, trying to compare it to this year to see, um, you know, are we spending more money than last year? Are we spending less? Are people coming into the hospital more sick than they were last year? Are they more acute? There's a lot of different things you look at when you're trying to control costs. And as you're doing all of this, you're making decisions based off of the information that you're retrieving from all the numbers that you're looking at. So there's a few different ways that you can classify costs. You can classify by behavior, by traceability, and by decision-making capability. So by behavior would be fixed costs and variable costs. We all know the difference between fixed and variable costs. Fixed is fixed, mm -hmm. yeah. variable might change. So cost allocation. Basically, this involves determining what the total cost of providing a service will be by assigning costs to non-revenue producing departments. Does that make sense? 
Let's take an example. Somebody give me any type of service, healthcare service. Childbirth. Childbirth? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. All right. So childbirth. Well, we got to try to determine what the total cost of that might be, right? So let's think about the things that go into childbirth as far as cost. Anesthesiology. Anesthesia, right? What what um, services that require a surgeon? Yeah. Possibly or or a surgical tech? No, a surgeon. Surgeon? Or an OB it's with gonna, it's gonna both. Surgeon yeah, has right. Nurses. Then you gotta have NICU possibly. Possible NICU. Anything else? The incubator. Postpartum care. Right. So when you're doing cost allocations, those are the types of things you have to think about. You can't just say, okay, childbirth, because there's a lot of things that factor into the act of actually delivering the baby, right? Mm -hmm. All the way down to the room and, and the things you have to provide in the room, the, you know, the, uh, the table and you, the tools and everything that's used, the dietary, all that stuff has to be factored into each stay or each service that you provide. You pick the good one because it's expensive, but, um, <laughs> but so that's what cost allocation has to deal with. And the purpose of this is to make sure that patients are paying only for the services that they receive, right? We don't want to be charging patients for C-section. They don't have a C-section, right? So that's why it's important to plan all this out beforehand so that we know exactly what we're charging because what we don't want is to have upset patients coming back to us mm -hmm. saying, why, <laughs> why did you charge me for this? I didn't have this service. And so I lot of hospitals that went to the barcode system where every time they you take something into the room, yeah. they scan it yeah. with that patient's ID. Right, yeah. I mean, you do this every time you have someone that gives birth. Mm -hmm. All of this has to affect them like every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, determining product costs. How do we determine the product costs or service? No you have to think about how much work goes into it, right? Mm -hmm. How long it's going to take to provide the service? What's going to be used? Is it going to require an x-ray or a uh, diagnostic service? All those things have to go into trying to determine the product cost, right? So many times they use activity-based costing. Um, they say that it's pretty accurate, a pretty accurate method of cost allocation. And basically, this involves what we just did, talking about the activities that are involved in you know, generating a product or a service. So we just did activity-based costing. Setting charges. Charges are published prices, but you won't find prices on websites very much, right? Mm -hmm. Hospital websites. Why not? Kaberi. Kaberi, right? <coughs> With different insurance companies, you're going to pay different amounts? Right. Mm -hmm. Your private insurance, you're pay different once you amounts. factor in insurance, the cost you see on a website could be totally different from what you pay. Right. So is it true that you can, the that we can negotiate our bills with the no. hospital, with the whoever in that department. Is it true to get it down? Mm -hmm. Your luck. Mm -hmm. I'm just there. You can pay a dollar a month, and they can't report you. <laughs> I mean, money. they're gonna they're gonna want the money. Right. I mean, you can try to work out payment plan, mm -hmm. but as far as trying to reduce your costs, mm -hmm. <laughs> good luck. They'll work with you on alternatives as to how to pay it, but that amount's <coughs> not gonna change. Okay. Yeah. You are, pla you are planning on trying to. No, okay. Okay. no, I was hoping I didn't uh, Debbie Downer. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe you can negotiate, like, if they tacked on fees after the fact. Well, if it's something incorrect, that's totally yeah. different. But, if but I always to heard that now. you can always negotiate your bill. That's why it's I It's not asked. a car. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I always heard that you can, be, you can call them directly and negotiate. Who told you this? Well, you wouldn't know what I'm just saying. 
this a credible, time, is this a credible source? No, they're not in healthcare management. Nothing like that. I mean, did they negotiate their I, bill? I don't know. They That's what you should ask. Okay, okay. Ask them that they negotiate their bills. This is something they just read. Okay. Yeah, we all want to know how to get That's <laughs> why I asked you because you've been in that <laughs> position before. Like, can people call like I said, and negotiate? And, and, and sometimes people, and sometimes people <laughs> will, will say something and mean something else. Uh -huh. It's possible that they meant that they will work with you on payments. Okay. Maybe that's what they meant when they said okay. negotiate, but as far as changing the cost, mm -hmm. unless it's something wrong, an error, mm -hmm. or something they added on that wasn't supposed to be on there, then. Okay. And yeah, if, if you were paying them, <laughs> if you were paying them anything, <laughs> they can't report you mm -hmm. because you're actually making payments, correct? I think that depends on the hospital. Uh, yeah. You can negotiate with your with the collection agency. Yeah. Now that's not, what you can negotiate. Yeah, not a collection agency you can negotiate okay. with. How but, much you can pay yeah. for to pay that debt off. Yeah. But as far as that but by, by that time it's out of the hospital. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. The hospital's yeah. already written it off. Right. The yeah. collection agency is just gonna get a percentage of whatever they can collect on. Oh you. right. Well, how many types of insurance are there? Millions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of different types. Because within each company, like Blue Cross, they have all different types of plans. So I don't know exact number, but there's a lot of different ones because there's a lot of different insurance companies. And so within each of those insurance companies, they have different plans depending on who your employer is, if you're paying for it out of your pocket or whatever. So um, we got out of, uh, off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought negotiate. That's why. It's all right. <laughs> Um, oh, so yeah, you won't see prices published online because there's so many different variables that go into determining the price. Um, now, if it's a cosmetic service, mm -hmm. like, you know, lap band or something, you might see a price for that, but that's a little different because that's something that's usually cosmetic and paid out of pocket anyway. Mm -hmm. I went and had LASIK done and it set a price and that wasn't what they charged me. Really? No. Higher? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have complications? No, I just chose a different route and then you know you get in there they put the lowest price on the internet and yeah they tell you that hey that's not the best surgery right yeah um well obviously there's also kind of what you were saying legal issues that if you kind of post you don't want people to say oh they bait and switched me or they just kind of tried to lure me in and having services so there's legal issues kind of related to publishing or posting prices um and that was in the article that I submitted at the last discussion board about the doctor that didn't, I mean, the case study that right. I did, it was against it, yeah. uh, publishing on billboards. Right, yeah. Um, other things that are, are factors of setting prices, obviously the market. You have to look at um, what other organizations are um, charging for their services. Maybe not just in your local area, but in your sure. state. Um, you have to look at supply and demand. If there's tons of different organizations providing the same exact service that you're providing, you may not be able to charge the same thing. Um, example of this is kind of like outpac outpatient surgery procedures because you're competing not only with other hospitals but also outpatient centers. You have to factor all of that in when you're determining your prices. Um, obviously, considering policies of your third party payers, your insurers, And take into consideration allowable costs. Everybody know what working capital is? You guys taking any accounting yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. It's not hard. Well, here's some of the primary sources of working capital. Net income. We already know what that is because we talked about that already. Temporary working capital that includes equity or net a assets, short-term debt or loans, or trade credit, and permanent working capital. So now you guys are learning about working capital, right? No? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the purpose? What's the purpose of working capital? We're always trying to make money. So to increase revenues and reduce expenses by making capital assets like buildings, productive by managing current assets. So what that means is if we have a building or a facility and no one's in there or no patients are going there, is that good for us? 
Yeah. Because yeah. we're not making the best use of that building, right? Yeah. So it's always going to be our goal to be as busy as possible so that we're getting the best use out of our capital assets, like our building. Same thing with the MRI machine. I've seen hospitals that have lost so much money because they invested so much into this machine and they don't have enough patients every day doing MRIs to be able to afford it. So they're losing money. So whenever we're thinking in terms of capital assets, we always want to make sure that we're making money off of it. Otherwise, we're losing money if we're not busy enough. We don't have enough patient volume or if we're, if we're staffing this building with all these nurses and, and techs and we don't have enough patients coming in, we're losing money. We're paying all this overhead, the lights, the utilities, the water for this building. We don't have enough patients, right? All right. We also have to conserve cash by cutting financing costs. Everybody know about financing costs. Everybody got a credit card. So that interest you pay, that's a financing cost. So the longer you have that money on your credit card, the more interest you're paying every month. Those are financing costs. So as an organization, we're always trying to cut down our financing costs, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, managing cash flows. So what that means is basically we're, we're taking responsibility of the money that's coming in. We're um, documenting it. We, we know exactly how much money we're bringing in. It's not something you can just check every six months. When you're trying to save money and reduce your expenses, you have to always have a pulse on it. Same thing with your personal accounts. You can't just not check your bank account ever and not know what's going on in there. If you're trying to, to save money or cut down on your bills, you have to constantly be checking what's coming in and what's going out of your bank account. So the same concept here. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So to enhance goodwill towards the organization. Everybody know what goodwill is? It's kind of like reputation. So, is how that like the PPO, the PO provider organization? Goodwill? Mm -hmm. No, it's 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 like my goodwill would be kind of like my reputation. Mm -hmm. So how do I how do I enhance my goodwill? I pay my bills on time credit to my score. yeah, right. You, a personal, personal yeah, to be their credit score. Right. Or yeah. So we want to pay our vendors and our employees on time to enhance our goodwill. And we have to d demonstrate to the lenders that we're credit worthy, meaning we're probably going to need loans down the road. Do, you, do you hospitals have like a credit score? I mean, is it like, do organizations it's, have the it's, same type thing? It's not that, but they have something similar, kind of like bond ratings. Mm -hmm. So they can have A or AA or AAA. It's kind of similar to that, but not exactly the same thing. So the, the higher your bond rating is, the better you look to lenders and the more likely they are to loan you money to purchase buildings mm -hmm. and assets and equipment and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can find an article to uh, give a little bit more information about that. Now does short term health care insurance cover like say you go to the hospital you have a major surgery? Mm -hmm. Does it cover that? You mean if you work somewhere and you have short term disability? Is that what you're saying? The health insurance. Well, short-term disability is different from short-term health insurance. No, I'm talking about health insurance. Short-term health insurance? Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Like, say you go to the hospital and you have to have a mic surgery. Right. Will that insurance cover that? I'm not sure exactly what short-term insurance, mm -hmm. what you're defining as short-term insurance. Mm -hmm. Say you don't have, like, a regular, like, traditional health insurance. Like you mean supplement? All and stuff like that. So you mean, yeah, I think like you mean supplemental. Yeah, like instead of a or something like that. Well, it's going to depend exactly on your, it's kind of hard for me to answer that because it's going to depend exactly on what how your plan is and what it's going to cover. Because there's so many different plans. And some cover hospital visits, some cover ambulance, transportation, some don't. Some cover emergency rooms, some don't. Some cover hospital stays up to three days. Some cover up to 10 days. It's just kind of hard to answer that um, without knowing more about, are you talking about a personal plan you have? Or are you just looking at, or are you just thinking of an example? Yeah, an example. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to answer that without knowing more specifics because there's so many different well, plans. Like TRICARE would consider some things non-emergent, so they wouldn't pay you, you have to pay your point of sale or whatever. Is that what you're asking? Like, 
Would you have to pay for it with the thing? Because some insurance companies would say, well, yeah, it's not an emergency, but you at the time thought it was an emergency. I'm thinking more of a supplemental. Supplementary. It's just going to depend. I mean, some will pay for, you know, your hot, your emergency room visit. Some may, you may have to pay a copay with your emergency visit, like $200 or something like that. It kind of just depends on whatever plan you have. Some people have really good insurance where they pay little to no copays. Most people don't anymore. <laughs> but they um, what insurance is that? Yeah, what is the best? It's going to depend one, on what, who, who you work for. I have one like that, which I is think that's really good. Um, where it was a Fort Bragg job. Basically, um, say the bill was 100, all we paid was 20, so they paid the majority of it. It depends a lot on the company you work for and what kind of um, rates they negotiate with the insurance company. So now, if you were an uninsured and you were looking for the best plan that, I mean, best insurance company. Hold that question. Okay. We're going to stop okay. here. We're going to stop here today. <coughs> we'll continue this on Thursday. Are you okay. going to post this so we can review it before Thursday? Or no? this we don't have class on Thursday. Oh, oh sorry. We'll continue this on Thursday. <laughs> 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 it's